All right, so what is indoctrination, you know? Indoctrination is when you're born. You're born into either a place, a country, a nation. If you was born in China, you would speak Chinese and you would believe in Buddha. If you was born in Africa, you would believe in the Orisha people and all the different um, gods of the Africans. If you was born in Europe, you're going to believe in the Bible and all that stuff. You was born in the Western world, such as America, you're also going to believe in God and the Bible and speak English. Those is the indoctrination. You're a soul. You don't have no set voice. You don't have no set language. You don't have no set culture. You don't have none of that. A soul don't have none of that until it inhibits a body. Where the body carnates depends what it's going to be. So what you would consider indoctrination is what you learned, what you picked up on the way when you carnated into a physical form. Now, the thing with this indoctrination is you, you have one body, but you have a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere in your brain. The right hemisphere is more analytical and the left side of your brain is more creative, more divine. So it depends now which side of you is going to take over. Look at them as two actual beings. You have a dark side and you have a light side. One is God, one is the beast, whichever one. One is male, one is female. Look at it however you want to look at it. Now, it depends on which, um, how you're born. A lot of people is born more creative. That's where you get your artists from, your, um, your sports people, people who's leaders and stuff like that, that have an intuitive skill of creativity. And then you have another group. You have now just the followers or what we call the analytical people. They follow instructions. They're more instructional people. They can't really take lead or charge of their life. They only have to really depend upon or give instructions so they follow laws, ordinance, and everything of that sort, and the government, and what everybody else say. So indoctrination would be now when you go to school, from when you're a child, the way your parents raised you is also considered indoctrination because they was already indoctrinated. So we go through all these indoctrination that make us believe who we are. The, the simplest form of indoctrination is like they tell you you're human. There's no such thing as being a human. You're, you're more of an a, a alien that is here that is being taught to be something that is not real. A human now, you say, what is a human? They say, oh, it's a man and a woman. How could you be a man or a woman if you're both inside? It's just an outside look. So whatever you see outside of you is what you actually um, identify in yourself with. And so we have a lot of things that we won't let go of because we identify ourselves so much with it. We can't reach to our light bodies, our higher self. In reality, you're pure consciousness. Pure consciousness means that you don't have a physical to you. Even when you look at the soul, which is light, and um, astral, what we call the astral light or the astral energy, that's actually a being in another form of a body too, which you're in another form of consciousness. But when you leave the soul, you become pure consciousness, which is spirit, which is form of like the same like the cloud, of uh, uh, energy that is thought-based. If you think it, you will. It. It's like you will everything into existence by your thoughts. You see, I got two sets of mouths on both sides of me with the mouths opening. Yeah, call me uni. This is the opening of the mouth. I let it all out. I'm here to tell the truth. I am the one called uni, Eunice, in the pyramid text. But I love the mouths. If y'all could make it out, it's there. You know, let me keep going on. So now, this leads to why would they put us into this um, indoctrination? Well, you got to realize, this goes deeper into like a, a deeper subject of immortality. Because as a soul or consciousness, you're immortal. But if you um, don't know that you're immortal, you're going to believe what the indoctrination had taught you. The indoctrination now is to actually create a world in the astral world. By you believing these indoctrinations, you create it in the astral world. You know, they, they tell you that your thoughts create whatever you go through. That's a fact. But it doesn't have such a big effect on such solid objects as the physical world. But it has a more effect in the astral world because it's a thought-based reality. Whatever you think instantly happens. So say now you was indoctrinated to believe that you're a woman. Say you was indoctrinated to be a man. Then when you go to the astral world, you're going to see a woman and you're going to see a man. 
but you're not seeing their pure self. You're not seeing their soul. They force that into themselves that to see that and to be that because that's what they believe. They lost the fact that they're a soul. A soul don't have nothing to do with a physical earth body. You, the earth renders you into this male-female polarity thing, but as you go up back to being a soul and whole, you don't have nothing like that. You're perfect. Your energy. That's now up into the ether where you're just consciousness. Your consciousness now is just whatever you think is it. There is no thought. There is no nothing. You're everything. You're perfect. So you would be an expression of your own thoughts. That's what you would see. So with that now, it's that immortality that we're being denied through indoctrination by you believing you're the body. So when you're in the astral world and you see somebody who look like, you know, Susan or Joey or, or, or Yvette, these people is not real. They're more demons. Those are demons because they won't let go of their physical um, thoughts of who they are. They believe that stuff and so they bring it in the astral world. You have people coming in there with that church stuff, bringing Jesus, bringing the government with this, um, all this stuff. They're on the lowest plane of the astral world. They can't go up high. They can't go and meet spiritual guides that is there to take them and teach them about who they are and what's their purpose here. And so until they let go of those thought forms, they're going to always be haunting them. And, you know, speaking of thought forms, a lot of the things you see in those astral worlds, such as gory faces or, you know, ancestors or beings that look like um, kind of horrific to the eyes, those is actually you, your thoughts, yourself. You create these. Everything that you're seeing, it was like a blank universe at first. And we created everything here with our thoughts. And so this world that we live in is a product of our thoughts. If you change your thoughts, you change your reality. You don't have a big effect upon this whole, but you have an effect more in your household. A bigger effect in your astral, where you're going when you die. When you're thinking about immortality, you have to die first, so this is the big point of it all. If you learn to create your own reality here by, in all this chaos and mess, find peace, take yourself out of paranoia, separate yourself from everybody you will start weaving your astral world your own world where you come from you're not here in your body your body is just a vessel used to come to here to experience to learn how to create your own reality where you're at you're someplace in another dimension far beyond the dimensions of this whole existence using the body to learn to create so until you learn how to create something peace love and not of this earth but just learn to create through your heart and through your intellect, you're not going to be able to leave this dimension and you're going to be a product of what you believe. I'm just giving you a heads up. That's what it is on indoctrination and immortality. University of Conscious Science, one love.